Hey everyone, Angelo here, homeless filmmaker in LA. I'm recovering from a dissociative disorder called depersonalization, derealization. And I thought it's time I see a movie. It's just time. I want to do it. Normally, the only place I'll see a movie at is the Alamo Draft House because they're very strict about no talking and texting. But I went to a second run theater because to go to the draft house I have to pay for parking and it's you know it's expensive to get a ticket there and a meal if you eat there uh, anyways so I went to a discount theater in North Hollywood the Regency Plaza 6 I think Pla Valley Plaza 6 it's a Regency theater it was like 375 for my ticket and I saw once upon a time in Hollywood so first of all, the good thing is, I didn't freak out once. I didn't have intrusive thoughts. I didn't have a bunch of anxiety watching the movie. I was a little worried about that. I was having anxiety during the commercials before the movie because the commercials suck. They are just awful. They give me anxiety because I'm like, oh fuck, why are they telling me about all this stupid shit they want? Me, uh, you know, want me to buy and then say, uh, up next, check out our pre-show. Next time, come early and you'll see more of the pre-show. Anyways, some morons were talking in the movie. They were way in the back like, oh man, that looks interesting. Um, I, I really, I don't understand why we can't commit violence against people in movie theaters who talk. Why not? It should be prison rules. You know, in prison, if somebody's in the day room and they try controlling the TV all day... Everyone else has permission to be violent with them, to go off on them. That's what I heard. It should be like that out here. It would keep people in line. And hey, if it happens to me or someone I know, that's just how it goes. I'd have to, it'll never happen to me. But if it happens to someone I know, I'd be like, well, you know, that's what happens. You, you shouldn't have ran your mouth. Anyways, I was surprised. I was surprised how much I liked this movie. First of all, again, I'm sort of numb from my dissociative disorder, so I'm not all the way back able to watch movies, but I was really surprised how much I was able to be into this and get into the emotions of it, and again, not freak out. I saw Parasite, which is a good movie, but man, I had so much anxiety, it was horrifying to watch. Not because of the content of the movie, it is very dark, the subject matter, but I was just freaking out because of my anxiety and my dissociative disorder, and... Um, I couldn't really, you know, enjoy being in the movie and feeling the suspension of disbelief. I almost felt like I was hallucinating the movie. This, first of all, I'm surprised because, you know, Tarantino, it's like everything's so, like, such a non sequitur and so referential to other movies. Sometimes I just can't take it. It's too much. It's like, just do an actual scene. Make an actual story. Well, this is uh, really good. It's really fun and interesting, and um, it was really compelling. First of all, it wasn't like all sardonic and distant and everything. Um, you know, like, oh, this is just a reference to a movie. Here's a music cue. That's a reference to a movie. Here's a line that's a shot or whatever, although there is a lot of that. And there were a little few times I'm wondering, like, man, how many times are they going to show people watching old movies and TV shows uh, from the 60s and 50s? Um, there's a lot of that in the movie, but it all adds up to something, I think. It's all very, first of all, Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio give great performances. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio is just so, like, you know, mesmerizing as, um, this alcoholic actor who's worried that he's getting too old and he, he missed all the great roles and, um, when he was younger and he's not going to have a chance to get his career going again. And, um, you know, I was wondering, because I was wondering, too, about the criticisms I heard of the movie, like, nothing happens and stuff. That's not really true. It. I was wondering where things were going, but I don't know, partly it's my dissociative disorder. I was willing to be along for the ride. But DiCaprio's performance is great. Um, again, I didn't feel that sardonic, like, you know, sarcastic, like, distant, like, oh, we're just referencing something here. It's another reference, another reference. Um, this actually felt like... You know, you could be into the story, and it's not just dragging things out just to be silly. I was wondering if that's what was happening. There is an early scene with Al Pacino, who plays a uh, movie executive, and he goes and meets um, Leonardo DiCaprio's character, 
in a bar to discuss some, you know, uh, possible movie roles for him. And I'm like, man, this scene, like, they're dragging, it's going on. I wasn't, like, miserable, like, waiting for it to end, but I'm like, okay, already, if you're going to have a scene this long in the beginning, it's got to be good. And uh, it was interesting enough, and it kept going, and of course all the wardrobe's fantastic, and it's beautifully shot. Um, it's uh, basically, okay, like I said, DiCaprio, he's, he's this alcoholic who lost his driver's license because he got arrested for too many DUIs, and so his stuntman, Cliff Booth, uh, plays by uh, Brad Pitt, drives him around and watches his house and stuff, and of course he lives next door to Roman Plansky and Sharon Tate, and... Uh, you know, in real life, Sharon Tate was killed by the uh, Manson clan. And um, so it's all leading up to, you know, these eventual events of what could, what they might portray happening, you know, with the Manson clan to Sharon Tate. And Cliff Booth uh, picks up a hitchhiker and ends up going to the uh, Manson family, the ranch they stay at. And it's weird. It was a good scene, but I, I'm still like, well, what was quite... I don't, when I think about it, if I would were to watch it again, it's all very entertaining, it's good, it's not fucking non-sequiturs and, and, you know, sardonic references to other movies, like, oh, isn't this cute, here's another reference, here's another reference, um, no, it actually felt like, uh, these characters were invested in what they were doing, and who they were, and, uh, but I'd have to question, like, well, why did he go to the Manson ranch, like, what, function did that serve in the whole movie I I mean it worked I didn't feel like it was a waste of time or anything and um it does have a payoff it just I'm wondering was it, it it's done it's good it's entertaining it just I don't know I, I wonder if it's my dissociative state where I'm not quite you know super engaged with everything yet but I'm glad I've made progress to the point where I was able to enjoy it and hey it's a three dollar movie theater it's a Tuesdays and Sundays I think it's two dollars or it's 375 I paid for a movie but um anyways uh the acting's really good of course performances are great DiCaprio's so expressive with his eyes um I do gotta say they make Bruce Lee an asshole for no reason like I don't understand why they even had a scene with Bruce Lee in it. Like, it didn't really bring the story forward at all. The guy who plays him is amazing, Mike Moe. I think that's his name. He looks just like him. He sounds a lot like him. Um, it's really amazing. Uh, but they make him a fucking asshole for no reason. Like, he shows up and then he fights Brad Pitt's character. And... Uh, he beats Brad Pitt's character one round with one kick. And then the second round, Brad Pitt um, just throws the hell out of him into a car. And I'm like, why the fuck are they doing this? Like, what's the point of this? And also, in the apparently, Quentin Tarantino's got his history totally wrong. Because he's saying, well, that's kind of who Bruce Lee was. Maybe he was arrogant. But in the movie, he's bragging about how he would beat Muhammad Ali in a fight. Um, and... Uh, he's like he's just bragging about it out of nowhere and, and Brad Pitt's laughing about it but I was um I remember reading about this how Bruce Lee tried to figure out if he could beat Muhammad Ali in a fight and so he got film footage of a Muhammad Ali fight and played it on a huge like a 12 foot mirror or something so he could see it played back to him so he could like his shadow could be over it and he could test out, you know, his own movements and stuff in the fight. And supposedly what he determined was, he said, he, uh, when, you know, someone asked him, like, do you think you could beat Muhammad Ali? Then he was like, look at Muhammad Ali's hand. Now look at my tiny Chinese hand. He's like, he would make me explode in one punch, basically. And, and Quentin Tarantino saying, like, said like, oh, he read that Bruce Lee said he could beat him. He got that totally mixed up. That's not right at all. Uh, but anyways, yeah, he's just, it take, took me out of the movie a little bit because I'm like, why is he in the movie? And his one big scene, he's just an asshole. And he gets in a fight. And I don't understand, like, how, understand how that even moved the story forward at all. Because in the end, nothing changed from that. So, didn't make sense to me. But uh, anyways, um, there's a lot going on in the movie. It's, again, beautifully shot. It's kind of fascinating that it was all shot around here. You know, I've heard about how they shut down streets around here and redecorated them and stuff and uh, to shoot the movie. And um, Brad Pitt's very good in it, too. 
Uh, he gets to have a lot of charisma and is very watchable. And um, I was a little disappointed that Margot Robbie as Sharon Tate, she didn't have much to do in the movie. Yeah, I get the idea that she's this kind of like dream in the movie because in real life she died very young and tragically. But and so it's like kind of like she's like this enigma, like, oh, this hope of the future. But it just kind of distracting that she's on screen for a decent amount and she doesn't have much to do or say. Yes, she's like a dreamer. You see her dreaming. You see her watching the real Sharon Tate's movies and in a theater and being excited to have a movie role. And I won't spoil the ending, but it's very touching. It's sad. Um, it's kind of incredible. Um, and uh, like, like I said, by the end, it's like, wow, this isn't just this goofy, you know, oh, fuck off. Like, this is just a, you know, a cute movie. It's actually kind of a sad, somber ending because of how it deals with, you know, the Manson family and Sharon Tate. Um, and it, uh, I'll spoil a little bit, vaguely, it changes history. So it's, it's sad in that, oh, man, like, you know, what could have been uh, if these people didn't go around killing people senselessly? Um, it was sad for, and it, that's why it felt kind of touching. Um, and sad. It's like, wow, okay. Like, it, it led to something. I'm curious to see the movie again. I want to recover from my disorder more. I think it was a good step to see this movie. Next time I want to check out a movie here on uh, Tuesdays or Sundays. Fucking people talking. What can I do? Um, also, man, I don't know why I've been so sleep. I fell asleep on the live stream last night. The last, like, 90... No, no, last, like, two hours of the live stream I fell asleep. And then I still slept till like 5.40 this morning. Uh, and I went to sleep fairly early after that, like 10 o'clock. But I was already sleeping like two hours before that. So, and I'm feeling tired now. I could take a nap now. I'm not trying to. I'm going to go to the library. Look, apply to more jobs. I'm waiting again to hear back about this one opportunity. I've been losing weight. I've been good. I didn't eat any food in the theater. Not even popcorn. And it smelled good. But uh, I'm just trying to eat protein, basically. Because I'm working out so much. And, um... Anyways, I'm glad I saw it. I, I didn't know. I, I thought I'd be disappointed. I thought, oh, my, I'm hearing nothing happens. Well, again, uh, partly, you know, it's under, like, no circumstances would I ever try and write a screenplay like that. Because, not that I'm equating myself to Quentin Tarantino, but I mean the type of stories he writes are so, oh, I just farted, so unconventional. It's like, it's nothing like, you know, you watch... A thrilling movie that thrills you and you know whatever I, I don't know I'm trying I'm not trying to like be glib in comparing any movie to his movies but when I think of like another movie I love say um, you know another movie like Gone Girl um, that's a thriller it not that it's conventional like it's surprising stunning thrilling and yet like you can understand the mechanics of it you know, in the writing. I read the script. The script was almost as thrilling as the movie. This, it's like Quentin Tarantino scripts have to be performed. And, you know, they're in his head. And some work more for me than others. And, um, you know, I don't know how, like, if I were to try, like, I would never try and come up with a story like this. But it's the kind of thing that's in him and he feels strongly about. It. Again, the Bruce Lee thing, though, man. Why is he in the movie? I don't even understand why is he in the movie. It's cool to see... Man, the guy, Mike Moe, is so good as Bruce Lee. And then we just see him getting a little rinky-dink fight with a stuntman. And it ends in a draw. And I didn't even believe that it would end with a draw. I firmly believe Bruce Lee would kick the shit out of this guy. So, it's just weird. Like, I was already not believing it as Brad Pitt was, like, fighting. Like, they were fist fighting. And, like, he was able to block his punches and stuff. I was already kind of not... Uh, it's already taken me out of it. Because I'm like, come on. Bruce Lee was such a better fighter than any stuntman. Um, and, again, I don't know how it brought the story forward. Other than, yeah, I get it. Quentin Tarantino loves Bruce Lee. But this is not... I don't know. You can fictionalize stuff, but it was just weird. It didn't work uh, for me. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but credit to Mike Moe, man. He's like, as soon as I see Bruce Lee on screen, I was so like, I wanted it. Because I loved watching Bruce Lee when I was a kid. I was fascinated by him. I would talk about him to people. I watched a bunch of his movies. My dad would let me watch his movies like from China. So I remember, what was the one? Fists of Fury? 
and there was the revenge. What? Not. It wasn't called the revenge. It was something like that. Um, something revenge. I can't remember. But uh, and what was the uh, the big um, American one? Enter the Dragon. And I have that one on DVD. I saw a few times. But um, yeah, something. Uh, oh, the big boss. I think that was one too. Um, one of his Chinese movies. Uh, but anyways, um, yeah, I watched him a lot when I was young and it's kind of like, like creepy, like the deaths in him and stuff and like the graphic, like the nudity and everything for a kid to watch. Oh, well. um, but anyways, uh, yeah, I'm still not over my disorder yet. So it's kind of bummer, like not being able to fully, fully be into watching movies, but I was very into that. And, um, I'm curious what my next experience would be. I wish they had 1917 playing here because I do not have much money. I had to get my tire patched up today. I think I know where I hit a nail in this parking lot where it just was not taken care of at all and there was a bunch of debris everywhere. And so I noticed my left tire was like way flat. It had 15 PSI in it. So I had to pay 25 bucks today to get it patched up. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, I'm actually surprised. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I thought was really good. I really enjoyed it. It was touching, sad. It wasn't this goofy, funny shit. Like, it was funny, but it actually, the characters seemed to care about who they were. Unlike, I can say, other Tarantino movies, they're just being goofy. Like, the actors are practically smiling in their parts. Like, oh, this doesn't matter. This is all, you know, we're all an invention of Quentin Tarantino. And we're all uh, homages or... or um, you know, uh, amalgamations of other characters that he loves. Uh, this, they, this they were too, obviously. You know, these fake movie stars, the fake, uh, you know, actors and um, mythologized versions of these other people like uh, Sharon Tate. But um, anyways, it was, uh, I'm curious to see it again and see how it affects me again and maybe in a couple years see it again. Not that I just want to see it again in a couple years, but see how upon multiple viewings it changes for me. Anyways, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, now it's out on DVD and Blu-ray, I think. But uh, yeah, go check it out.